Donald Trump understands, if he understands anything, grievance. My name is Michael Sandel. I teach political philosophy at Harvard University. My new book is The Tyranny of Merit, What's Become of the Common Good? It shows how the divide between winners and losers in recent decades has poisoned our politics and pulled us apart. And it points toward a more hopeful politics of the common good. Over the last four decades, we've seen a project of market-driven globalization, and this has brought deepening inequality. More than that, it's brought attitudes toward success that make those on top believe that their success is their own doing, that they deserve the rewards that globalization has heaped upon them. I call it meritocratic hubris. This hubris is the conviction of those who have landed on top that they deserve their fate, that they deserve the benefits that globalization has heaped upon them, and that by implication, those left behind have no one to blame but themselves. They must deserve their fate as well. This meritocratic hubris has generated understandable resentment among those left behind. And this is the resentment that has fueled the populist backlash against elites. In a fair society, those who work hard should be able to rise. If you want to flourish in the new economy, go to college, get a degree. You too can rise. We hear this often these days from politicians across the political spectrum. On the face of it, this is an attractive offer, but it has a dark side because it suggests that if you don't go to college and if you don't rise, if you don't flourish in the new economy, your failure is your fault. You have no one to blame but yourself. Elites have looked down on those less credentialed than themselves. And the average voter has noticed Donald Trump understands, if he understands anything, grievance, resentment. He himself feels a keen sense of resentment against elites. He's constantly attacking elites, academic elites, journalistic elites. I'm not going to give you a question. You are fake news. Go ahead. Even at a time when he's supposed to be leading a country out of a pandemic, he's He's attacking scientists and the medical establishment, but it's the key to his politics. He is able to articulate something that mainstream politicians and political parties have missed. He understands that people are angry against elites. This is something that the mainstream parties and politicians have missed. They will only succeed if they address this sense of elite entitlement, meritocratic hubris, that is so galling, understandably galling, to working people who are struggling to make ends meet without benefit of prestigious credentials. So how do we fix it? First, we need to rethink the role of universities as arbiters of opportunity. We need to find a way to make life better for people who haven't been to university. It's not enough to tell them that if you go get a diploma, then you will be able to rise. We need to redirect politics and policy to address people as they live their lives. These days, the successful inhale too deeply of their own success. And it leads them to look down on those less fortunate than themselves. And so a new politics of the common good requires that we put the dignity of work at the center of politics. But it also requires something else, a certain humility among the successful. Reconsidering our meritocratic hubris, remembering the luck and good fortune that helped us on our way. This turning of attitudes towards success is an indispensable part of any attempt to heal the polarization that afflicts our politics. This greater measure of humility can go a long way toward pointing us to a new politics 
of the common good. 